accept the adjournment. I now move the adjournment, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Well, the question is that this House do now adjourn. Mr. Richard Holden. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I'm absolutely delighted to be kicking off the adjournment debate today on the feasibility bid for uh, the Weirdale Railway. Now, um, this uh, bid has already now, uh, following the uh, announcement last week, been agreed to by the Department of Transport. And I'm absolutely delighted to see the Rail Minister here today, because he was one of the first people to come up to Weirdale and actually see firsthand um, the Weirdale Railway in all its glory. Um, and now, this is a particularly important, uh, a particularly important conne uh, connection for the communities uh, that I represent, but also my honourable friends for Bishop Auckland, Sedgefield and Darlington. Um, and uh, it wasn't just the minister himself who's visited, but I also, in the last couple of days, had a uh, last couple of weeks, sorry, had a visit from the uh, Science and Innovation Minister, who came up to Frostley, Stanhope, and Eastgate uh, as well to uh, to see the railway uh, and to see all the potential that it really has to deliver transformational change for uh, my constituency, but also other constituencies further down the line. And I'm particularly glad. Uh, that the uh, Honourable Members for Sedgefield and Darlington are here today uh, and have the support for the Honourable Member of Bishop Auckland, who uh, herself has just had the excellent news that the Toft Hill Bypass is finally going to happen. In the 1951 Durham County Plan, it was first mentioned, um, and it's now been approved by the Government a mere 70 years later. Um, and also, I would uh, beg the Minister to uh, also lean on his fellow frontbench colleagues to support um, my bid, which will be coming down the line, um, hopefully for Crook, Willington and Towlaw in either funding round two or three. But it wasn't just honourable members in this place who have supported the bid for the uh, Weirdale Railway. The Mayor of Teesside, Ben Houchen, was also involved in it, along with hundreds of local people who have completed my recent surveys on it. My Crook uh, councillors elected last year, uh, Patricia Jopling and Mike Curra. Um, some local candidates and people who have been campaigning are Robbie Rodders, Will Wearmouth, and Steve Cowie, and but particularly one, the, the, the real group of people who have been keeping the railway going as a heritage line uh, over the last few years, the huge number of volunteers at the Weirdale Railway Trust. Now, the Weirdale Railway uh, ceased operation uh, uh, as a uh, freight line back in the uh, early 1990s. Uh, but it had been operating a, a heritage service since then, and uh, last year it was bought by the Auckland Project after its previous owner failed. And I'd particularly like to thank uh, Jonathan Ruffer, who's been doing so much great work down in Bishop Auckland, and particularly the chief exec of the uh, Auckland Project, David Madden, who's been really involved in helping me um, and helping actually uh, other honourable members as well uh, in the project to really help transform uh, the west of County Durham. I think one of the most important things that uh, they've done is really give a, a private sector edge to what's going on. And I'd also like to thank Durham County Council uh, and Darlington Council for the support that they're giving more broadly uh, to, the, to the project and to the bid. Now, back in the 1840s, Bishop Auckland was first connected uh, to the rail network. That extension happened uh, further to Crook in 1844, then to Frosterley in 1845, and finally to Stanhope in 1862. And in 1887, there was a further bid to extend the line from Stanhope right the way up to the top of Weirdale. Now, that entire line and the budget for that line, uh, as I read recently on the excellent uh, Weirdale Museum's website, was a mere £48,627. Now, the bid we've just put in for the uh, actual feasibility study alone is for £50,000 for the whole project. But uh, it's just one of those interesting uh, quirks of history that it's been, uh, it was in 1893 that uh, finally Sir Joseph uh, Pease, the uh, then Liberal MP, um, he cut the first sod on that extension in 1893. And I think it would be great to see uh, the first 
Conservative MPs, largely for uh, County Durham, doing exactly the same for uh, the renewed line, hopefully if this feasibility study comes through in the next few years. Now, um, well, uh, far, far earlier than the actual railway lines um, were the wagonways that we had across County Durham, and that's because we were part of the heart of the Industrial Revolution. We actually had horse-drawn wagons all the way over the moors back in the uh, early 19th century, and that was because we had uh, iron uh, stone uh, which had to be taken over uh, to concert over the moors. And uh, it's very much in that sort of uh, theme of us being the, uh, the heart of the first Industrial Revolution that I think honourable members from this side of the House are now wanting to really press this project, to really provide that connectivity to uh, help transform our communities into the next Industrial Revolution which we're currently seeing taking place under this Conservative Government. Now, unfortunately, passenger services ended on the line in uh, 1953 and to Crook in 1965, with the freight service finally ending, as I'd said before, in the uh, 1990s, uh, with the Eastgate Cement Works site closing, which I know my honourable friend for um, Sedgefield actually worked at. Uh, so it's great to see him here today and supporting the bid, and now as the MP for Sedgefield, <laughs> uh, now as the MP for Sedgefield, really helping to want to deliver that uh, transformational change. And since or, order, uh, the technicality is uh, that the whip must now seek for the adjournment again. Um, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I beg to move this House do now adjourn. The question is that this House do now adjourn. Mr. Holden to resume his speech. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, and since, as I said, since, the, since that closure, there has been an irregular uh, heritage service operating locally. Well, the bid now isn't for that, uh, that heritage service to come back. What we're really wanting to do is connect the communities which I represent uh, to uh, the rest of the North East and also improve the line further down, as my honourable friends will mention briefly in their speeches. We've had a real opportunity in Weardale um, we've, it looks like we've got potentially the second largest lithium deposits in the country uh, outside of Cornwall, which could provide a real freight anchor for that service. Uh, and, and as exploration is going on, that it's only right that we start to look at the feasibility of how we'd actually start to transport some of that lithium, particularly as, far, as part of that, of that proper industrial revolution with that next, level, next generation of manufacturing jobs we're seeing up at Blythe or at Sunderland, where Nissan are putting huge amounts of investment in. But it's not just about freight, it's also about connecting communities. We represent really proud villages and towns across County Durham. And the town of Crook uh, is, is uh, really look needing uh, a bit of a, a boost at the moment. And so one of the main aspects of the bid is actually to look at the feasibility of connecting the towns uh, of Crook and the village of Howdenley Weir uh, to the line as well and also ensuring that at the moment the terminus is in Bishop Auckland and that we can have a proper, ter a proper through running service there so, the re so they can capture all of that opportunity further up the dale. And the third aspect of the bid really is looking at a possible uh, extension further up the dale if uh, that looks like it's a, a viable goer, I shall certainly be backing that. But this is about employment. It's about ensuring that people up in Weardale can access those great jobs, particularly down in Teesside. And we're seeing those massive investment, the Freeport, the Darlington Jobs Hub, the Treasury, it's all coming to Teesside. And I want my constituents to be able to share in that, whether they're in Crook or any of the towns and villages up in Weardale. I want to also see them be able to access the best education opportunities that they've got. At the moment, those, uh, that, that is just not possible with the transport infrastructure we have. But it's also more broadly about providing that opportunity for people in both directions. And that also means that we can help really drive the economy of Weardale in terms of heritage and tourism. Uh, we're seeing real local efforts going into places like the Weardale Museum or the Weardale Adventure Centre or the fantastic pubs uh, up in the, uh, around Stanhope or in the smaller villages further up the line. And I really want to see those jobs uh, thriving in the long term. But it can't just be about transport connectivity. It's also about buses, broadband, uh, enabling people to work locally, and to, but also to stay local. And that's part of the real thing that we're trying to drive from this side of the house in terms of connectivity. 
My honourable friend earlier on uh, in the budget speech, my honourable friend for Darlington said, Shy Ben's getting out. Well, we in County Durham from the Conservative side are always arguing for our communities. And uh, The Economist recently in an article said that I was proving expensive. But I think the truth is that for too long, when the North East was represented by Blair, Mandelson and Co, they took the North East, in fact the entire North of England, the Midlands, Wales, Scotland, for granted. And I don't think that we're prepared to do that. We're fighting every step of the way, every day for investment in our communities. And that's something that I'm incredibly proud to do, uh, and I think that we're going to keep pushing for. And I'm delighted to be fighting for it, but as part of a package, because this railway is part of many more uh, bids, uh, and as I've already referenced what's happening in Teesside, but across the north. Um, I've already put in a, 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 another, another bid also accepted for a, a connection from concert to the time. I think it's really important in terms of we can do stuff to improve cycling and walking on that route as well as on the Weardale line. But I also want to look at public transport options there and that will be reporting later this year. We've seen, uh, I've also seen, and I'm thankful to ministers on the front bench for the extra £10 million that they've provided for Shotley Bridge Hospital which is helping us to actually double the number of beds there um, in that community hospital from 8 to 16, uh, far higher than the zero beds that, that had been planned before I was elected. I've also fought for the motorhomes tax, particularly helpful for my community, which we are increasingly tourist-focused, uh, and also for the draft bear duty to really help those wet pubs, still part of those thriving communities in the north. This government is really delivering for the North. It's delivering for my community in North West Durham. It's delivering for County Durham. I'm so glad that we've seen this announcement that this is going to happen today, and I'm delighted that the Minister's uh, been able to support it. I'm very proud to represent North West Durham, um, I'm, and I hope to for many years to come. But I think with that, we have to deliver on what we promised at the election, which is levelling up. So uh, although I'm very glad for this feasibility study, and I'm really hopeful for its future, I would encourage the Minister to uh, keep thinking of more ways that he can help us deliver for the people who voted for us in 2019. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr Paul Howell and Mr Peter Gibson have sought permission from the mover of the motion, Richard Holden, that uh, they may make a short contribution in the adjournment debate. They have also requested the same permission from the Minister, and it has been agreed to. I have been informed. Mr Paul Howell. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, as, as the member for North West Durham has uh, already said, yeah, in, I used to work up at Eastgate for a number of years in what was then the thriving industry of the cement works. Um, unfortunately, that became part of the squeeze between Scotland and the Midlands, and, and they lost. But part of the reason was probably the economics of getting trucks of cement out of that valley. And uh, without a railway line, it wasn't helpful. Um, I'm sure the minister is surprised to see me talking about anything other than the Furry Hill Railway Station <laughs> bid, which I obviously um, you know, wholeheartedly support our progress on. And as he knows, a feasibility study has progressed already on that. I do think there's many parallels between that bid and this one in terms of its, its necessity that it gets the, the connection of communities together. I think we have another one to talk about, which is the Leam side line, which is a different bid, because I think that's more about the whole East Coast main line. I think it's a different style. Um, but really, Furry Hill and the Weardale lines, I think, have a lot of parallel in terms of just making sure our communities can reach the centres of employment and the centres of employment can reach back into the countryside and the, the, the leisure activities that, that go with that. Um, having worked in Weardale, um, it's not a flat part of the world. Um, we do have weather up there, and any additional contributions from rail in, in, in terms of the opportunity as opposed to road for getting down to the metropolis, as they call it, of Darlington, um, would be very welcome at certain times of the year. I know that. Um, and, you know, as, as, as we know, this particular connection is actually the Weardale line going into the, what was, what's currently known as the Bishop line, which is the connection into Darlington, which will be severed when we uh, do the big works at Darlington Station to improve the whole economics of that, that argument. Um, and I'm, I'm really pleased to be seeing both of these happening, but it's really important that we also pick up between this, this, this on that particular section of the Bishop line is part of the old Stockton to Darlington line. Mm. It's, it's where things started. You know, back in, um, 
on the 27th of September, 1825, that's even before me, Minister, <laughs> um, is, is, is when you know, the locomotion engine was reassembled um, and steamed prior to the opening of the railway at, on what's called the Aircliffe Levels, which is just in the Sedgefield constituency at, at, at Newton Aircliffe. And that's where the whole um, thrust of where the 2025 celebrations will come from. Mm -hmm. And at that particular site is a pub called, of all things, The Locomotion, which is sadly decrepit now and really does need repair and rebuilding. And you know, I'm very hopeful that as part of this um, re um, Im imagining of the line and the connections, we can also fill into that the historic significance of places like the Locomotion yeah. Pub and rebuild that to bring back, uh, preferably as some sort of a hist historic re re reference to that. Um, because again, just touching back into Furry Hill for one second, that, because the connection to Newton Aircliffe, Newton Aircliffe was from munitions, and munitions in the war drove the um, the, the, the Ferry Hill station, which at that time was the busiest station in Europe. Bizarre, but it was. Um, and I really just, it, it's, it's that reconnection to history and the reconnection of our communities that I would really like to see, um, is, is why I'm here, trying to support um, the efforts in what we do with the Darlington to Dales railway line. And I would just recommend that. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'm grateful for you calling me to speak. Can I put on the record my congratulations to my honourable friend for North West Durham for securing this debate and for his tireless campaigning on this issue. The potential restoration of the Darlington to Weardale line was a very welcome announcement last week as we are reopening connectivity in the North East, levelling up and unlocking its potential. I look forward to the Government's feasibility study examining the scheme's potential for improving local connections, boosting business, employment, educational and leisure opportunities for my constituents as we look at expanding services from Darlington to Stanhope. We know that the Weardale line, steeped in local history ahead of the bicentenary of the Stockton and Darlington Railway, is an important step in our levelling up agenda. I am proud of my regional colleagues, the members for Sedgefield, who we've heard from this evening, Bishop Auckland, and in particular, North West Durham, for their collective dedication to this work. And I want to thank ministers for being receptive and supporting this project into its next phase. Minister. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Mr Deputy Speaker. And um, may I start, before I go on to the... Uh, main part of my speech, just to um, not, uh, last evening there was a terrible train accident um, just by, uh, 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 by Salisbury and um, there are, uh, earlier today there were still two people in hospital uh, one of whom is a member of the railway, uh, the railway family um, and I just thought it would be appropriate for uh, the house to uh, send, their, uh, send their best wishes to those that are injured and those that are affected um, in what happened there um, there are plenty of lessons I'm sure that will be learnt, but we're at the very early stages of uh, the investigations, but, and I'm sure I'll get the opportunity to inform the House about uh, that later, but I think it would be remiss of me not to have said something at this point. Um, may I can start by congratulating um, my colleague, my friend, the Honourable Member for North West Durham for securing this debate on an issue that I know uh, I, am, I am very well aware of it is of greater importance to him and his constituents. When I visited him uh, uh, a few months ago um, to see the line for myself, you could just detect the, uh, uh, the mass, the, the huge amount of community pride there was about their railway, what it could possibly be, and actually just the sense of community itself. Um, and I, I'm, I know his constituents will be proud of him uh, for what he's uh, managed to achieve so far. Um, I should also uh, congratulate, uh, just for their kind words, more than anything else, the members for Darlington and, Sh and Sedgefield. Um, I often jest uh, with the member for Sedgefield um, uh, about his wisdom, um, and um, I call it age, but he calls it wisdom. Um, but um, it, I, I, it's not a joke to say that he has done more for Sedgefield in a matter of two year, uh, less than two years than many previous incumbents of that seat had done in a generation, and he is to be commended for it. And also I congratulate the, uh, um, uh, the member for Bishop Auckland, who I know couldn't be here tonight. I should also um, 
uh, uh, say thank you to the member for West Bromwich East uh, for her interest in these issues and my uh, shadow minister, uh, the, the member for Slough, because he is omnipresent in these debates, which shows, uh, and he does not have to be. And I think it show, shows him up in a very, very good light in the seriousness that he takes these matters. And um, I do actually appreciate his scrutiny. So um, um, I, I, I congratulate him also. Um, I was pleased last week uh, that the budget confirmed the importance of this amazing local commitment, which has secured initial funding from the Restoring Your Railways Fund to develop this proposal and see if in the future it stacks up for potential future delivery. Um, I did hear, I have heard of the phrase, uh, Shy Ben's getting out. Um, I, I, I spent some time in the European Parliament and uh, uh, my flatmate at the time was Lord Callanan of Low Fell, as he is now. And um, he, it's a phrase he used quite a lot um, in, in, uh, uh, in indoctrinating me into terms that I might not have known um, uh, as a Midlander or as uh, someone further, from further south than him. Now, I know that actually there's a huge amount of work that a number of not so shy Bens have been doing to try and get more than nout out of the government, and I think it is paying off for them. Um, and I look forward to working with all the honourable members concerned Durham County Council, the Auckland Project, as my friend for Bishop Auckland uh, talked of, as this um, proposal develops. Now, the government is committed to levelling up the country and reconnecting communities to the railway is central to that ambition. As part of our levelling up agenda, in January 2020, uh, the government pledged £500 million for the Restoring Your Railway programme to deliver on our manifesto commitment to start reopening lines and stations. This investment is reconnecting communities across the country, regenerating local economies and improving access to jobs, homes and education, all things that my honourable friend for Bishop Auckland knows and campaigns on. <clears throat> More than five decades ago, the Beeching Report led to the closure of one third of our railway network. 2,363 stations and 5,000 miles of track were identified for closure. Many places lost their railway connection and, um, and really have not recovered since. It is sometimes easy to forget, however, that some communities were cut off not a, as a result of the Beeching Acts, but were victims of decisions taken even earlier. For communities cut off by those earlier decisions, such as those that are the subject of today's debate, the difficulties of being cut off from the rail network are felt just as keenly as those who lost their lines and stations in Dr Beeching's infamous reshaping of Britain's railways. For the towns and villages left isolated, no matter when they were cut off, restoring a railway line or station has the potential to revitalise the community. It breathes new life into high streets, drives investment in businesses and housing, and opens up new opportunities for work and education. And that's why we set up the Restoring Your Railway Fund. And that is why the government is investing right now across the country to progress work on restoring those connections. Indeed, the Dartmoor Line will be the first to reopen later this month. Part of the Restoring Your Railway programme is the Ideas Fund, which provides development funding for early stage proposals to help communities to develop strategic outline business cases. The fund has actually received, in three rounds of bidding, 199 applications, including an application in the most recent round, a successful application for the Weirdale Railway. Every bid has been sponsored by at least one Member of Parliament, often several. In fact, 320 Members of Parliament supported a bid or more to the Fund. I therefore pay tribute to all the Honourable and Right Honourable Members from across this House who sponsored bids to restore rail lines and stations in their own constituencies and have done so far. They've given us an amazing choice a rich mix of choices, a rich tagine, if you will, a proper dish for which, from which I can uh, uh, sample um, uh, and, and choose wisely to how to spend the taxpayers' money in the best and most appropriate way. And I really do appreciate the amount of work that goes into formulating a bid, and I'm aware of just how much these proposals mean for local communities. Those members who have taken the time to work with their local communities and put forward a proposal are great advocates for their constituencies, as demonstrated here this evening. 
I was pleased that as a part of the, bu of the budget last week, my, honor my right hon. Friend, the Chancellor, was able to announce 13 more schemes from the third round of the Ideas Fund to, uh, to be successful in their bids for funding. And, of course, one of those schemes was uh, the proposal to reopen the Weardale line to passenger services. This scheme and 12 others from the third round join the 25 projects already supported to develop their own proposals in order to get a step closer to reopening lines and stations. <coughs> During the assessment process, I had the pleasure of reviewing all the proposals made and of seeing what a difference these, that these reopenings of stations and lines could do to these communities. And obviously, from what we've heard from the, uh, my honourable friend um, uh, today uh, for North West Durham, Weirdale, the Weirdale line is absolutely no different. Seeking to join the existing Weirdale 18 mile heritage railway in the Weirdale area of outstanding beauty, which closed to passenger services in 1953, to the Bishop line and create one of the most, one, one continuous travel corridor connecting to the East Coast Main Line, this proposal does have the potential to transform the region. An individual in Eastgate would be able to get a direct train into Darlington, accessing all the opportunities available there, and go further to all the places up and down the East Coast Main Line. It would allow these isolated communities to access employment and educational opportunities and encourage inward investment and economic re regeneration across the area. And I'm aware, very well aware, that for the last nine years, the Auckland Project, a local regeneration charity, has sought to create opportunities and investment into Bishop Auckland and the surrounding area. And this project has the potential to bring tourists into the area to appreciate the, the, the many attractions on offer. Um, so if you want to know what a difference restoring a lost rail connection will look like, you really do not have to go much further than speaking to my honourable friend. The Restoring Your Railway uh, programme is already connecting communities, not that far away from uh, we're, we're 34 million pounds for detailed development and early construction activity has already been funded to rapidly progress plans to reopen the Northumberland line between Ashington and Blythe, which closed to passengers in 1964 as part of the, uh, as part of the beaching cuts. Slightly further afield, and I mentioned it, but displaying our commitment to levelling up communities across the country, the Dartmoor line between Oakhampton and Exeter in the southwest will officially reopen for year-round services on the 20th of November this year, thanks to £40 million worth of investment. This will mark the first re uh, reopening under the Restoring Your Railway Manifesto commitment. We are getting our manifesto delivered. Yeah. Yeah. The route will connect Exeter, St David's, Crediton and Oakhampton, providing a hub for visitors to explore Dartmoor and regional links for local commuters. It's been very well received by local people. Um, and I think, actually, based on what my honourable friend should say, I should take a brief moment to recognise this country's heritage railways, because the UK is a true pioneer in the history of railway development, nurturing and benefiting um, from the talents of Runel and Stevenson, amongst others. And heritage railways are major contributors to the UK's visitor economy, attracting about 13 million visitors pre-pandemic and bringing an estimated £400 million to the economy uh, annually. There are over 150 operational heritage railways running trains in over 600 miles of track between 460 stations. They perform a variety of important functions across the country, from transportation to leisure and entertainment, uh, tourism, education, community projects, and as symbols of our country's rich industrial heritage. Um, this government, led by my colleagues in DCMS, is working to ensure the continued success and growth of this important uh, component of the heritage sector. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, I will conclude by assuring the House there is a tremendous amount of work being done um, in this area, in restoring your railways, to reconnect smaller communities, larger communities, um, place it, towns with cities, villages with towns, regenerate local economies and improve access to jobs, homes and education. I really do look forward to seeing the proposal to reinstate passenger services on the Weirdale Railway and watch it develop through the Ideas Fund. Let me just fi fi finally say, Mr Deputy Speaker, um, I, I give my thanks to all those members uh, and right honourable members who took part in the, uh, in the first three rounds uh, and those, to those who weren't successful. Please keep the faith because this is a very, very popular policy and I do expect to see it rear its head again. 
The question is that this House do now adjourn. Does many of that can say aye? Aye. No, I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order. Order.